So unfortunately, the only thing we have going on in this video is moving monster fish into their new 4,500 gallon Zingu River Aquarium home. Well, and starting Predator Bay 3000, our giant uh, 3,000 gallon marine predator shark and ray aquarium. Oh, and building uh, two 1,500 gallon DIY aquariums in the annex. Yeah, but other than that, nothing else is going on. So if you want to see that stuff, let's go. All right, let's see. That's uh, four kits of leftover pond armor. A whole bunch of underlayment and some top uh, hardwood plywood. Hmm, and a whole bunch of uh, two by sixes that would be perfect for legs for another aquarium. If only I had some longer. Oh, there we go. There's a stack of ten foot two by sixes. Hmm. All right. So as you can see, despite uh, just building that behemoth over there, the forty five hundred gallon, I have leftover materials, specifically the pond armor that I accidentally ordered too much and uh, that stuff has a shelf life on it and it's only got about two months left before it would expire so uh, it's going to be time to build the two 1500 gallon tanks in the uh, the middle of the basement annex and uh, well you know what let me tip the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. Okay so when you come in the annex uh, you have what's going to be the 600 gallon over here you have the two 1500 gallons in the middle and then of course <laughs> the 4500 gallon which still has a couple of Oscars that are just lost in there. But they're getting friends soon because this is the Moving Monsters video, so we know what that means. Uh, but at any rate, uh, these two tanks in the middle, these are 10 foot long, five feet front to back, and three feet tall, and there is two of them. And as you can see, I have a lot of leftover materials to do all the framing and pretty much get all the, you know, get all the framing underneath and get the top coat of underlayment on. Uh, I think for both of these. So, you know what? I might as well go ahead and start doing that. So, uh, as well as the moving monsters, we're going to start building two more monster aquariums. And in addition to that, we're going to start cutting out some more uh, panels, some, some more tops for the 4500 gallon. As you see over here, we have one up on there right now, but we have to cover the entire aquarium because that is a lot of... Uh, humidity coming out of there and I'm actually surprised it's only at 67% uh, considering being wide open like that um, but at any rate I, I don't run the uh, fish room at 67% humidity I run it between 40 and 55% so uh, we're gonna need to get that covered up and make get this room back down to the normal humidity percentage as the rest of the fish basement and uh, the way I do that mainly is by covering all the aquariums and all the sumps as well as then using the ductless mini splits. And in the summertime for a couple months where I live, July and August, I also use a dehumidifier as well, but the rest of the year, it's not needed. Okay, a lot of work to go here. So let me get started on this and then a little bit later, we'll start moving some monsters. So it is time to move the big boys from the 3000 gallon over to the 4500. Look like the Peacock Basket Oscar are ready to go. I'd say the Atabapo pipe looks ready to go. And how about the flagtail portrait lotus? Man, has he become a monster in here. I can't wait to see what he looks like in the 4500. So the day is finally here. It's time to move the monsters from the 3000 gallon uh, Amazon Aquarium, or future Predator Bay 3000 Aquarium now, over to the 4500 gallon Zingu River Aquarium. So uh, this is obviously gonna be no small feat. Uh, they truly are monsters <laughs> and uh, they're fast. So. Uh, Wish me luck getting these guys moved over, but I, I for one, cannot wait to see what they look like at the 4500. Uh, I'm going to have to definitely get some uh, good shots of them cruising the new home as soon as they go in. It should be pretty amazing. So I'm going to take my net, well, probably not this net, maybe, maybe this net, and uh, catch me some monsters. Okay, so we left this alone for the first section since this is not a perfect match for the width of panels I have. We came down here, and you can see we've added... Two more panels on top of the aquarium. Here we gotta make a special width cut. And we've added two more. And then we have a special panel here. It's gonna be a part of the dock post sticking out of the water. So we'll have to cut around that and everything. And then a last panel here. So that's all I had in stock in the fish shed. But that'll help, you'll be surprised. Even blocking a little more than half of it will help 
Um, and it's also kind of cool to see uh, that what difference that makes. Test this first, and then obviously go get some more of the twin wall panel, get it completed, and then, then we'll see what it looks like then. Then I expect it to go all the way down, uh, just like the rest of the fish basement. And uh, I know there's one thing some people are concerned about, the plants not making it to the water, that they need to be lower. As you can see, they're, they're all in the water. This is the highest part of the riverbank too, and they're all in the water. And then as we go further down, you can see the pots are considerably far down in the water. So I just wanted to show that because I know uh, it's a valid concern, obviously, if you're expecting the plants to uh, live in the water, they gotta be in the water. And I know it's not always easy to see all that on video, so just wanna remember to try to show it. And you know, come to think of it, while I'm covering some of the things that people ask in the questions and comments on the videos is, we know this room does not yet have its ductless mini split. That's where it'll go. It's pre-wired, it's ready, but I haven't put it in yet. So how is this room staying warm? Well, we know we have the window to the fish basement open over there with a fan, and we have a door open here all the time, which is equalizing the 77, 78 degree fish basement into here. And what you end up with is 75 degrees in here. So it's a little cooler, but not bad. But there are times where I live uh, where it can get very cold. And so when it gets, it stays like this is good. It, the, the basement can equalize the temperature up till, down till I would should say about the 20s. When the weather outside gets in the 20 degree, I have a supplemental heat here, which is K1 kerosene, which can burn inside. And uh, that'll make this room <laughs> 90 degrees in the rest of the fish basement uh, 80s if we let it. But uh, at any rate, just want to show you. So we have, uh, we have supplemental heat. We have battery backup. We run air to the tanks if there's a power outage. And uh, the tops are for humidity, you know, covering the, you know, managing the humidity. A lot of people say, what do you do about mold and this and that? Well, I don't allow those things to happen. I condition the air continually. Uh, so we never let the humidity get out of control. We never let the temperature get out of control. That's also how I heat these tanks. There's no heaters in these tanks. They're heated by the ambient temperature of the room. Otherwise, this would not be affordable at all because just this one tank alone, just the 4500, I don't think I could afford to heat this with aquarium heaters, much less the entire aquarium basement. All right, well, I just took a bath. Uh, first fish caught was one of the Fogos, and uh, this has just been in the tank a few seconds, so getting, uh, I'm sure he's pretty freaked out. It's the first time he's ever been caught since he was a tiny little fish, but, uh, and he is not anymore. And the funny thing is, as huge as he looked in the 3000, he doesn't look quite as big in the 4500. But I'm gonna give him a minute to settle in some, and then uh, we'll see if he takes advantage of all this space. So it hasn't been long at all, and a few of the guys are moved over, and uh, it's pretty awesome watching them all school together. Uh, none of them are quite sure where they're at, and they recognize old friends. So they're like, you know what? Let's, uh, let's stick together, guys. <laughs> and if I go zoom out here, you can see how they don't overpower this aquarium. That's for dang sure. But they do look awesome. And uh, they are huge, but uh, when you put them in a 4,500 gallon, they fit pretty darn well. But uh, yeah, beautiful watching these guys enjoy the new tank. Uh, and the... Uh, the young Oscars, the little guys, they're coming out and checking them out. So far, no aggression. So they've swam with them a few times. This is just awesome, watching fish swim 33 feet down the aquarium. And actually, the other uh, peacock bass is in here as well. He's down over here. He's just got put in, so he's still getting situated down there. But uh, yeah, these guys are looking awesome. But I gotta tell you, that peacock bass is 20 something inches. That Oscar is huge. Actually, that flag to Porto Lotus is huge also. <laughs> Just monsters. But, uh... <clears throat> yeah, there they go. They got the other peacock bass scooched up there since they all tried to jam into his corner. But I have a few more uh, fish to catch, so uh, I'm gonna get back to doing that. But I'm happy to see that all these guys are looking good so far after the first few minutes in the 4500. So as you can see, you had to tear down the 3,000 gallon, uh, uprooting all the caves for the fish, making it so I can catch them. We can kind of see further down there. See the tanks all emptied out here. Probably a better view here. But yeah, 
pumping out and uh, I'm down to the last fish just trying to catch the uh, Atabapo pike and uh, the funny thing is I keep catching uh, Pleco. <laughs> there was these little Plecos I remember putting in a long long time ago. Never saw them for four years and now they're they're like gold nugget, cactus Plecos, things like that and I'm pulling them out and they're like eight or nine inches. <laughs> they're like enormous. <laughs> You'll see them in the 4500 gallon uh, hopefully uh, but they're in there now, so who knows what else I'm going to find. Now I just try to find that pike. Alright, I'm covered in water <laughs> and exhausted. And uh, it looks like a bomb went off with a 3,000 gallon, but uh, all the fish are moved over to the 4,500. Well, with the exception of, I'm sure there's a few more plecos, but uh, I still have the pump in there draining down. It'll drain way down to just uh, an inch or two, and then I'll fish out those other plecos. Because uh, obviously I have a ton of uh, hardscape to pull out of there because we are looking at the future Predator Bay 3000. The 3000 gallons go in salt water, so I got a lot of hardscape to remove. But guess what? I just found a whole bunch of hardscape for the new 1500 gallons. Lots of rock and wood in there. Nice. And I think it's safe to say with everybody moved over, the uh, 4,500 gallon doesn't look uh, too overly full. <laughs> a couple of monsters swimming right there and it doesn't even make a dent. The other cool thing is I notice uh, the Oscars are all hanging out together. We got the big boy Oscar, the little guys hanging with them. So that's a good sign. I was a little worried about the smaller Oscars with these big boys, but it looks like they're making friends nice and fast. And there he is, the elusive had a bop of a pipe. He was the, the hardest one to catch, but he's in there and cruising along. And of course, we've got the three peacock bass. Now that the Orinoco, the one sitting down on the bottom, he's the one who was the last one moved in. Yeah, they all do that. They sit there for a little bit once you move them over here, and then they get going. Ah, that fly tail is beautiful. Now you know why I got two more of those fly tails. I can't wait to have a school of those guys. Well, there's what's left of the 3,000 gallon Amazon Aquarium. It's the end of an era. This uh, went live in December of 2018, and we are now in January of 2024. And as you can see, it is completely broken down. Well, almost. There had to leave a little bit of water in there because there is still a couple of uh, really large gold nugget pluckos in there that I need to fish out and add to the uh, 4500 gallon but as you can see it is mostly broken down and oh man was it fun <laughs> catching the beast out of here and getting it moved over but uh, as you'll see they are happy in their new home and uh, yes if you're thinking it looks like you're going to get some more exercise with some aquarium fit work moving all of this uh, rock and wood and, and substrate out of here you are correct <laughs> it is going to be a chore, but uh, hey, lose weight, gain muscle, clean out the predator, the future Predator Bay 3000 tank. So as we know, this is going to salt water and uh, this is going to be the future home of Predator Bay 3000. The uh, sharks are going to get a really nice, uh, over slightly over six feet front to back uh, and then uh, 21 feet long aquarium to swim about so they're going to be loving this and I get to apply all the lessons learned from uh, the first Predator Bay in terms of the aquascape I'm going to make aquascape that the uh, sharks can't knock down so it's going to be pretty awesome but uh, yeah so this is a huge video because this is the very beginning of Predator Bay 3000. So cool watching the uh, whole crew checking out the new aquarium together all the boys from the 3,000 gallon, all hanging out. Very cool. Beautiful Atabapo, two Fogo bass, Orinoco peacock bass, an Oscar, of course, a wild Oscar, and a flag tail porch of lotus. That is a massive Oscar. Loving that guy. It's cool that he's checking out the scape. I noticed the. Uh, Atabapo pipe was the first one to uh, check out the cave, which is cool, very cool. Okay, last but certainly not least, I'm starting to lay out the uh, framing for the two 1500 gallon builds here in the middle. Uh, what I'm going to do for these is 
it's not going to be a step by step or anything like that, but each update, each uh, video each week, there'll be an update on the 1500 gallon builds. So I'll make sure that I include, you know, an update on all the framing, how the framing is done, and then an update on laying the floor of the aquarium, and then, then an update on building the framing for the walls and the wetland, and, you know, and so on and so on. So we'll see the progress of the build. Uh, you'll get to see each step. So you won't see me building it, but you'll see each step that goes into the build for both this 1500 gallon and this one over here. So for anyone who just wants to see the progress of the builds at a high level, that's what you're gonna get. And for anyone who's interested in DIY builds, obviously I have a lot of other videos for that, but you'll see every step that goes into it. And I'll talk about you know, what's happening with each step. So you'll also get the information you need uh, to apply towards your projects or just to see an example of each stage of a build. So hopefully the 45 gallon doesn't look too full now that I've uh, added the fish to it. Yeah, I didn't think so. So this was their first night in their new home. Uh, coming to see them here in the morning and uh, after an hour, you saw on the short, they were already colored up and looking good and uh, the next morning, everything is looking good as well. They're looking beautiful and uh, still swimming about. So yeah, the uh, 4,500 gallon, it has fish. Let's, uh, let's find the rest of these monsters. Now this is something I, uh, I figure it would be a popular spot for the bass, perched up underneath the, uh, the dock there in that filter lighting and everything. I figured they'd like that quite a bit. And these guys just love swimming around. I think they're following me I think they're probably hungry. They're probably like, hey, we didn't get fed yesterday. You know, with the big move and everything. Uh, now that we're uh, settled into our new home, we're ready for some chow. But a little early in the day for that right now, but we will certainly be getting these guys fed later on their first seeding in the 4,500 gallon Zingu River Aquarium. Man, all these monster fish, they just don't look quite as monstrous <laughs> in this aquarium. But they are definitely big boys. Uh, the Orinoco, looking great. Love the distinction between the colors. You know, you got the rainbow, the blue, the yellow, red, green with the Fogo. And then you've got the uh, green and yellow and orange for the Orinoco. And of course that flag tail, <laughs> he's just enormous. I remember when he was given to me because he had outgrown a 220 gallon. And I'm not kidding you, he's, he's more than two times the size than uh, when he was given to me in terms of overall girth and everything. And then of course, the wild Oscar, the beast. This guy is humongous. He still looks huge in here. I mean, he's just a, uh, a beast of an Oscar. And I'm really happy to report that the uh, little Oscars in him are getting along great. They, they pretty much gravitated to him right away as soon as he was added to the tank. So uh, I have high hopes that uh, they'll get along and uh, be a nice little Oscar group together. Definitely there's not going to be any uh, fighting over who's the boss because <laughs> this guy... I don't know that, oh, I'm pretty sure that the selectively bred uh, albinos will never reach the size of this wild guy. And this guy's got a, he's got an attitude too. So as long as you don't challenge him though, I think he's not too bad. And the other Fogo, being shy, but uh, hanging out under that dock, waiting for an unsuspecting little fish to swim by and boom. So at any rate, uh, I am very happy to say that uh, Everything went well. Uh, I got soaked with water <laughs> and uh, took four hours to drain the 3,000 gallon and get all these guys out of there. And uh, happy to say that I found a bunch of pleco that are gigantic now and I've been added to here. And of course, now we'll never see them again <laughs> because of all this rock and wood, but they are in here. There is uh, two cactus plecos in here. And there's two uh, gold nugget plecos that'll be added in here. And I have a... Uh, uh, a site I found that I think I'm going to be able to get the larger plecos I'm looking for for this aquarium. So uh, that'll be good. I want to get them situated early. A uh, couple, couple of the things that uh, we want to do right here, what we did wrong on the 3,000 gallon was the water, internal water flow. So we put a lot of time and uh, effort into making strong internal water flow. And then the other one is having the cleanup crew, the proper cleanup crew in there. These guys can be messy eaters. So uh, we want to have plenty of pleco to eat up the crumbs and uh, fish like the uh, flag tail. We know we have more flag tail growing out. So uh, we're going to get everything dialed in. And of course, we we're addressing nutrient export with the uh, riverbank system up there. And oh, I see new leaves growing in. That is awesome. And uh, we got that going from the very jump of the aquarium. So hopefully, like all things, practice makes perfect. And as we 
work on new aquariums, we get them dialed in and we do better each time and so far the Zingu River Aquarium is looking awesome. Now I just can't wait for the grow outs to be ready to move in here. Uh, this tank definitely needs arowana. It needs wide bar silver dollars. It needs more peacock bass. And of course it needs catfish and stingray. There's such an exciting future for this aquarium. I cannot wait, but, but this is a milestone because the fish are in their new home and their old home is now opened up for the Predator, 3, Predator Bay 3000 build to start. So many exciting things for uh, 2024, I can't wait. Well, as you can tell, I wasn't kidding when I said there's a ton of stuff going on in the Aquarium Domain Fish Basement in 2024, and we're starting off with a bang. You know, moving monsters, Predator Bay 3000 starting, which we know triggers the 2,000 gallon Lagoon Aquarium, which then triggers the 1,500 gallon marine system, plus two new 1,500 gallon builds, one of which is gonna be the new 1,500 gallon Amazonian Islands. So we're gonna move everything from the 750 into there. Then we know we're starting a 750 African tank. Then we got another tank, which is up in the air. We got a lot of good ideas for that. And then once these are built, it clears up the space of the room to start working on the last annex build, which is the 600 gallon Nano Aquarium, or the Zen Aquarium. That one's gonna be fun. And that one's actually gonna be really cool because I'm going to do that one for the least amount of cost and the least amount of uh, work. I want an aquarium that runs itself. That, that one's going to be interesting. I'm going to try a few new ideas. Not new in the scheme of things. Uh, other people have done them, but new to me, uh, applying them at that scale. See if I can make it all work. But uh, just a ton of stuff going on. So if you like Amazon cichlids, DIY aquariums, sharks and rays and saltwater and fresh water, just, just come back. There's a ton going on. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.